So as you can see, I posted a tweet on Twitter that I am doing site reviews and I got a bunch of websites here, as you can see, and I picked some of them and I'm going to be going through all of these and, um, you know, try to give my feedback on what they could improve. So without any further ado, let me introduce myself. My name is Nandi. This is from University and let's get started. So as you can see here, we are on the first site. It is asapdesign.co, but you will always see the website links here at the top. And um, yeah, basically it is a, a pretty cool site in my opinion. Uh, however, there is a couple of things that I want to mention here. The first thing that stood out to me is that you have a primary button here on the hero section, but you also have the same style primary button here in the navigation bar. And this is usually not the best thing that you can do. Uh, what we usually do in hero sessions is that we have a main primary action somewhere on the page, somewhere in the hero section and have secondary actions around the page, because that's how we can make sure that the user will be able to click the primary action and they will not be confused that, okay, we have a book my free call today here. And we also have a book a call here. So which one should I click? So what you can do is you can just keep this, the primary button and just design a secondary button here to the nav bar. If you take a look at the uh, Frame University website, you can see that that is exactly what I do. As you can see, I have a primary action here, join whitelist. And I also have the same button in the navigation bar, but that is a secondary action. And um, yeah, the user will not be confused. They will know that, okay, I have to click the join whitelist, which is blue, and then just ignore everything else. And then what is cool is that if I start scrolling down, you can see that the navigation uh, action turns into a primary action because now we no longer see this train waitlist button here. So you can have, you know, setups like this on your site as well. So yeah, I, I recommend you uh, designing a secondary button because you don't really have any other styles for this button. As you can see, as I'm scrolling down this page, we just have this primary button everywhere. So, you know, it is a great idea to differentiate between these actions, but other than that, it's pretty cool. Okay, so this is the next website. And as you can see, we have the same issue. So we have a primary button here, get started, and we have another primary button, which is contact us. So as a visitor, I just don't know which one should I click. I'm confused. Um, again, just make sure one primary action to make sure that the visitor is really like focusing on that primary action that we want to, uh, you know, emphasize. Um, what else do we have? So. I noticed as well that you have these little, I don't know what are these like tags that are scrolling and you can hover them and they have a hover state. However, you also see a pointer cursor when you hover over these. So if these are not clickable, you shouldn't have a pointer cursor because now I just think that these are clickable, but I'm clicking them and nothing happens. So just make sure to change their cursor to not pointer, but regular cursor. You can basically do this by going to Framer and if you select any element, you can come to the right panel, Web Cursor and just select the cursor that you want. In this case, you want this regular cursor rather than the pointer one. So yeah, that's how easy it is to fix this. Uh, then also what I noticed is that you have this PNG or JPEG, um, probably PNG logo here. You can see that if I zoom in, you can see that it's a bit pixelated. Just make sure to just use an SVG because you know it, it looks um, a bit unprofessional. And what else do we have here? Um, yes, I think I also noticed that you have just it's just a small thing, but just make sure to have a space between the D and the bracket here. And yeah, other than that, it's a pretty clean and pretty nice website. Love the colors and everything. Um, yeah, just make sure to also here in the footer, uh, have the SVG logo instead of the PNG and yeah, uh, great job on this website. Okay, so here we are in the next one. It seems like it is a website, um, for someone who is creating websites for lawyers and, um, and yeah, let's see what I noticed here. So first of all, um, what I noticed is that I <laughs> probably this font here is not matching this one right here in terms of size. 
uh, and also the color is a little bit different so the cycle text is probably a little bit smaller just make sure to match uh, the font size that you have on this here um, what else uh, I also noticed that here you have this navigation bar but this part here these items are not centered so these are a little bit to the left and I know why is this uh, because you just set this stack to space between and you know that's that's just how it uh, distributes the space between these elements but you can fix it quite easily i'm going to show it to you really quickly so basically you have the frame you have the logo here let's have the logo as a white uh, circle let's say okay so these are the menu items in the middle and then on the right we have this follow me on x which is a bit wider so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure that we have a little bit wider there so basically that's the this is the structure that you have let's have it on a different a bit different color here so basically you've set it to space between but as you can see um now these menu items are a little bit to the left so basically the way you can solve this is by making sure that the left and the right element here has the same width so basically a way to do that is by wrapping them in frames so for example this logo can be wrapped in a frame i can just press option command and enter and then make sure that it is set to fit content and then back to fixed and maybe i can set it to 100 and uh, maybe 200 and then make sure that the distribute is start so the logo is on the left and then i remember now that okay i have 200 for the width and then i do the same here I wrap this frame in another frame set it to 200 pixel width and then here the distribute will be end so the element is on the right side and now as you can see everything is perfectly centered because we have the same size for the left element the right element and then for the uh, for the center element we don't have to have the 200 because it doesn't really matter because it just will be you know completely centered and it will be you know offset it to the left side of the screen just a you know small thing that maybe this yellow button doesn't really fit the the vibe of the website here because you have all these uh all these little purple things with glowing effects and stuff like that so so yeah maybe just uh, maybe just come up with a different uh, different design for that also you have a little overflow issue here so you have this glow and you can see that at this point it just cuts off it's because you have probably it's like a shadow and you maybe have it wrapped in a frame which has overflow set to hidden so again just to show you as an example we can have this little uh, frame here i'm going to set it to blue and around its corners and then i can add shadow y zero blur a little bit bigger maybe change the color to blue so now you have this glowing button maybe and then if this is wrapped in a frame what you will notice is that it just basically cuts off and that is what is basically happening for you so you have something like this and then you know it's just uh, doesn't really look great on the top the way you can solve this is by setting that frame to overflow visible on the right panel and now as you can see the glowing effect now can overflow this frame and yeah it just looks pretty great and also another thing that i noticed here is the uh, this image here you probably designed this on a smaller device and that's why you didn't really notice it uh, but that's completely fine uh, you can e easily fix this you can have you know uh, your image maybe let's say this is your image this blue frame and now if this website gets bigger it just grows like this and that's why it you know changes its uh, ratio and that's why your face is gonna get cut off you can fix this by you know having it as as it is the original ratio so you set it for example like this and then you set this little lock right here so once this side gets bigger or smaller it will always keep that ratio to make sure that your face is not getting cut off or anything so, so yeah that's how you can fix your little image there also one more thing you can see that you have these accordions and when you click this 
it just switches to the X icon instead of this plus. To have something a little bit smoother, a little bit better, you can have a smooth animation there really easily. So you can have the component. I'm, I'm just going to create this right here. It's going to be a frame with this gray fill. And I'm going to grab a icon and just place it in right here. Let's search for X. Pretty great. Let's rotate it. So first we just have this plus button and I'm going to turn this into a component. Let's have it accordion. And of course, this is not a full accordion, but you can get the idea by just uh, looking at this example. So first you have the X and then instead of just having a different version or different icon here on variant two, you can just rotate it like this. And that's it. Uh, when you will change between these variants on tap, for example, or click, you will see that it will be really nice and smooth. As you can see, if I click this, this icon just rotates nicely. So yeah, I think that's that's just a smoother animation than just switching instantly to a different icon. Okay, so let's see the next website, Five Leaf. I think the overall design is it's quite interesting. It's exciting with all these background patterns and everything. It looks pretty good. However, for example, here on this hero, we have a bunch of empty space, which I like personally because I like minimal things. However, maybe if you don't have any illustration or anything here, maybe it makes sense to, you know, center this uh, text and everything here uh, to, to keep it a little bit more balanced. And um, also sometimes you have just, two large empty spaces so here as well you just you just have this huge empty space here and you just have the cards on the far right side of the screen and um, the the problem here is that even if this screen gets so much bigger it will still stay on the right side of the screen and yeah it just it just can result in in a really unbalanced composition here so what you can do is you can just uh, have a structure where you have everything here so the content of this section in a frame here in the center of the page which basically has fill width and then also a max width so maybe 1000 pixel max width so it will not grow bigger than that max width so let me just show you an example for that so for example here is this navigation that we designed previously and what you have right now on this section right here is that you basically set it to width fill so no matter what it will just try to fill up the width of the site and let's say if this element right here is the cards on your website then as you can see it will be just on the right side even if this screen is super large and this can result in these uh, in this um, composition. And what I would do is I would just make sure to apply a max width to this frame. So as you can see, I can apply max width, maybe 900 pixels. And then what you will notice is that it will not grow bigger than that 800 pixels. So that's pretty great because then it will still be responsive uh, below 800. So it will fill up the available space up until 800 pixels and then once it reaches that 800 that it will no longer grow bigger and you can have this nice and compact design at the center of your site uh, which would you know look much better without these large empty spaces here on the left side and also what i noticed here is that you just have these two black um, links here so you just probably have to go into your styles in framer and just make sure to adjust these link styles because probably you just uh, applied a different link style to the build and strategy uh, accidentally. So yeah, just make sure to, to fix those. So this next website is Carbon Draft and uh, let's take a look at this. So as you can see, uh, again, what I would say is that I would apply a max width for this navigation content just to make sure that they don't really go to the edges to the sides of the website because as you can see everything is nicely being centered here and every basically other content on the website has a max fit which looks really nice so yeah and also i think maybe this hero section could be a little bit bigger what i usually use for hero sections to make sure that they adapt to different screen sizes because now i'm using a bigger display so probably you have a fixed width 
uh, sorry, fixed height for this hero section, maybe 600 pixels or 800. And instead of that, you can use something that's called viewport height. So for example, if this is the hero section here, let's set it to fill width. And then if you set the height to viewport, then you can change it to maybe 80 VH, which will basically mean that it will always take up 80% of the given viewport. So as you can see, if I resize this site, uh, you can see that this gray hero section always takes up 80% of the given viewport height. So I would suggest you to use something like that so you can have a bit more uh, space for the hero sections and the how does it work doesn't, you know, uh, appear in the viewport when we land on the website, but maybe this is what you want here. So I'm not sure, but it's just a little tip for you. So this uh, website here, Creative Verse, it's very great. However, I don't really understand this uh, space here, this empty space. So maybe you want to look into this. Maybe you are using uh, viewport uh, height for this section. Let me take a look into this. So yeah, uh, as you can see, the height is 100 VH here, which is totally fine. You can keep that on 100 VH. However, what you didn't notice is that on bigger size um, sized monitors, it looks like this because these texts are not centered within this hero. So what I would do to fix this is just make sure that these are centered. And so, yeah, it, it just doesn't have then this huge empty space right here. So that's just a little optimization that you can do. And also a little feedback on these uh, on these bento cards is that, you know, they look really great that you have all these animations. I feel like it's a bit too much because I'm like looking at this section here and everything is moving everything is doing something and i'm not really sure where i want to look so i'm like trying to read something like here but then a star pops up right here and then a cursor is moving into this and then everything is like it's just it's just a bit too much for me so what i would do is i would just try to make these you know hoverable cards that you can hover over to activate its hover state which is the animated uh, you know interaction other than that i think it's a pretty clean and nice website okay so we are on usevisuals.com and um and yeah again this is also really a uh, really great site really nice and minimal i love it uh just a couple of things so again with the buttons that i talked about previously i think it is Actually, it's a, it applies to most websites because it's it's really like an underrated thing that most people don't do. Just make sure you have only one primary action within the viewport when you are in the hero section. Uh, so just turn this into a secondary button here uh, at the navigation bar. And also I would suggest you to use a bit more secondary buttons because for example, these learn more buttons, I'm not sure if they need to be uh, primary uh, style. Uh, but yeah, other than that, it's it's pretty great. And maybe also just to have a bit more consistency in terms of max widths, um, this is not really lining up with the uh, with the hero, sorry, the navigation. So this is uh, where, for example, this button ends. And if you see, it doesn't really line up with the with the footer. So either make this navigation. A little bit smaller like this in terms of max width to match the footer or make the footer bigger um, for example what i do on frame university is just i have a set of uh, max widths that i define so i have large i have base and i have small so for example as you can see the base is what i have right here this size and also you can see that it is being applied to this uh, little video that is playing right here. And it is applied to these right here as well. And then we have small, which is this right here. You can see that it's a bit smaller. It is you know, great to kind of differentiate between, between different sections to, to make it easier for the eye to scan the content. And then I also have a large, which is seen right here. So you can see that it is larger than the max width of the content of the navigation. So you can see that it is a little bit larger. So I have these three predefined max widths and I use this throughout the 
whole site on every single page and yeah it just gives you it just gives you um a really great way to to work with different uh, widths and to make sure that you have consistency throughout your site okay so next site is artiflex and uh and yeah I think we should go back to the hero section actually. So what I notice right here is that I'm looking in the hero section and it's just it's just offset it to the to the left and I'm not sure why this is happening. So I'll just grab this and move it to the center. Uh, so that's what I would do with the with the hero, just a little small issue. Maybe you are again designing on a smaller device and you're not noticing that these things are happening way on, on larger screens, but but yeah, you, you definitely want to take a look into this. By the way, if you don't know how to check the size of uh, or how it how it looks on a on a bigger screen, you can go to inspect mode on Chrome and just change this uh, percentage value to 50%, and then you can actually see how this looks on a large large uh, screen. And as you can see, everything looks quite okay. Uh, the rest of the side, but here this is far to the left, and then these icons for example is um is they are just on the right and um and yeah i think they should be somewhere around here aligned with these uh, illustrations right there uh, and also when i'm looking at these icons here i just think that they are just way too big so i would maybe try to to make them a little bit smaller and also again with alignment i think uh just make sure you have you have proper alignment when I'm, you know, checking the alignment of this uh, navigation logo, it doesn't line up with the actual text right here. And then it doesn't even align with the footer logo right here. So, so yeah, just make sure again, with those max width values, you can really uh, make sure that your sign, site has these consistent alignments and, uh, and yeah, it can make it, it can make a huge difference. Also, I see something here. Oh my God, I didn't even notice this that you have this navigation here and it doesn't take up the full width of the site. So make sure to set it to max, uh, sorry, fill width. So, so it makes, so it fills up the available space on the site because now you can see that you have these empty spaces here on the left and on the right. Uh, you can only see it when you are over something that is a bit different color and not black. Uh, but yeah, uh, these are just some some improvements that you can do right here. So here we are on this next site, which is called many when and that design. And uh, it looks really nice. I love it. Actually, uh, this background pattern is pretty cool. And also this little gradient, I actually like it. However, which I don't really like is that this text overlaps these UI elements. And maybe it's on purpose. I'm not sure but I think I would maybe explore a version where this text is somewhere around here uh, and just have some empty space between the, between the UI elements and the text. And, um, and yeah, also this page has a custom cursor. So if I take a look at this, you can see that I'm not sure how it is being recorded with my, with my screen recorder, but hopefully it's, uh, it looks exactly how I see it, but I basically have a white custom cursor on this site. And um, there's one small issue with this. And it's basically that when I hover over an interactive element, you can see that, and again, I'm not sure if you can see that, but I can see it, that my system cursor is displayed over the custom cursor. So I have the custom cursor, and then when I hover over an interactive element, I have a pointer cursor over the custom cursor. It's not really the best thing. So I'm going to show you really quickly how you can optimize this and make sure that you have a hover state for your custom cursor. So here I have this little cursor component in Framer that I just created. It's just a simple circle and I can create a new variant for it, which will be called hover. And then here I can just make it a little bit bigger. And maybe I can change this transparency to maybe 0.5. And so now I created this custom cursor. I'm just going to drag and drop it here. And then if I select this desktop breakpoint, I can go to cursor and then I can remove this web cursor. 
and then change it to custom cursor. And then I can just go and pick this cursor component and it will be variant one. And in theory, now it is basically replacing my system cursor. And again, hopefully you can see it really well on this little recording. So what I want to do is when I hover over this, um, this little circle here, for example, on the left side of this navigation bar, I want to make it switch to the hover variant of the custom cursor. So I select this frame here, go to cursor, set variant, and then hover. So now when I go and hover over this, as you can see, this little cursor changes to that variant. So this is what you need to do right here. You just have to design a custom variant for this cursor, which will basically act as a pointer cursor. So your system cursor will not be displayed on top of the, the custom cursor. So yeah, I think that's just the improvement that you can do on this site. Other than that, it's pretty great. So here we are on Tolu Avari's uh, website, which, uh, which is a portfolio. And, um, and actually I think it's a pretty decent, decent website. It showcases his work. Um, it uses some of the, some of the Framer University components and you can see these, uh, these, um, chroma hover backgrounds that you can find on the Framer University's resources section. If you search for chroma here, you can see it right here. You can just copy and paste it into your framework website but yeah uh, it looks great i love this site however i noticed one small thing that um, actually many many people do in framer this little mistake because they just don't notice it and that is basically here when you have this little animation you can see that when the about goes back when i leave this element it switches to the word work for a second so it switches to a different word it is the same for contact when I switch back, the contact turns into a different word. And I'm going to show you why is this happening. So if we are in Framer and we are creating a component for this little interaction, I can just create a text here, contact, and I can wrap it in a frame by pressing command and enter, and then duplicating this contact and placing it below it with the arrow keys. I can turn this frame into a button component. And then what I will do is I will make sure to have a hover variant where I basically move both of the text layers to the top like this. So what will happen is when I hover over this, I see this little interaction. However, what Tolubabari did is that he created a new variant here. And then he was like, okay, I'm gonna rename this to about. And then he added a new hover state here and then moved this to the top. And then he was like, okay, I'm gonna rename this to about here as well. I'm gonna center it and it's gonna be great. So let's take a look at this. As you can see, when I hover, it, it's great. We see about, but when it starts going back, as you can see, it switches to contact for a second, but you cannot really see it, maybe. Uh, so I'm gonna just make the transition so much slower that you will actually see what is happening. So we go into about, it works nicely, but when we go back, it switches to contact for a second. And the reason for this is because we have two text layers and here on variant two, we only changed the first and that is now changed to about, but we also have to change the contact here to about. So I'm going to go here to the right panel and change it here at the contact property and then center it again with common age. And now what you will notice is that it is finally fixed. And, and yeah, it, it is basically that that's how easy it is to fix it. So here we are on the next side, discover notes. Um, I love it. Uh, this hero section looks pretty great with these stickers. Um, one little thing is that when I hover over these cards, I see this text and they are selectable. Well, you can have it selectable if you want to, but when I have interactive elements, I usually want to keep them, uh, their text non-selectable. So when I hover over this, I don't want to see this selector cursor. Um, and basically the way you can do that, the way you can prevent this text from being selected 
is by selecting the text layer, let's say this contact, and just changing uh, or adding a style to it, which is user select, and setting it to none. So now the text will no longer be selectable. Also, what we see if we scroll down is that this website is pretty great. However, there's a small thing. If we take a look at this on an even bigger screen, so again, I'm going to do the same trick that I showed you, you can see that this tablet is just sticking to the right side of the screen, which is, which yeah, it just doesn't look too balanced. So again, what I would do is I would try to make it, uh, place it in a, a, in a container, which is right here in the center of the screen. And, um, and yeah, just make sure that it doesn't go to the far right of the screen. Um, also a little responsiveness issue here. This sticker here with these testimonials, they are not filling up the available width. So we have some space on the right, on the left as well. And you can basically solve this by just setting this frame here to fill width. So the sticker fills up the available space, even if we are on a huge device like this, you can see that now we have so much more space on the left and right. So make sure that you're testing your sites on different devices because you might be running into these small issues. If we scroll down, you can see that uh, we have this last section, which looks really nice with this, uh, with this gradient background. However, what I don't really notice or understand, I don't know, I switched up notice and understand. Um, so ready to take your productivity to the next level. It's, it's not white, it's like this gray color. And actually it doesn't really have a great contrast ratio with the background and it is not that readable. So in order to, to improve this, you just wanna make sure that these texts right here are set to white color. So let me just change that to you really quickly. So now as you can see, it is much more readable. It looks really nice with this with this uh, gradient background. And, uh, and yeah, it, it, it looks pretty great. So that's it for this video. I hope that it was helpful. If you want me to make more videos like this, if you want me to react to my subscribers' websites, then make sure to leave a comment uh, down below and let me know. Make sure to also check out Framer University because I have a bunch of free lessons, remixes, resources that you can use to learn Framer for free. So, so yeah, make sure to check out that. And yeah, I think I, I will just see you in the next one.